Welcome to the More Than Disc Podcast, where we dive into conversations with good friends to bring us out of our stress, away from our to-dos, and out of our head. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. It's great to have you. Make sure to subscribe and leave us a review to help others find out about the show. With that out of the way, let's... Wait, 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 wait. One last thing. If you're interested in supporting the show, please consider becoming a patron. You'll play an active role in making sure the content we produce continues to improve, plus you'll unlock some bonus content. Visit patreon.com slash downwithdiz. Now that that's out of the way, let's jump right in. So you just proposed to Tia. How was that? It was good. So we were going to McCall for her birthday and I thought it'd be just... It was her... Oh, it was her birthday. Yeah. So I do think that was a little cheesy proposing on her birthday, but I mean, we were there in the moment, I guess. Yeah. So I uh, went ahead and decided it would be a good time. Yeah. Because you guys have been, had been going out since high school, right? Yeah. We're high school sweethearts. We've been together since senior year, basically. So <laughs> I might have to cue like a sound effect that's like, ah, <laughs> like, <laughs> no, yeah, that's, yeah. oh man. Wait, what grade did you say? Senior year. Senior year. Okay, yeah. 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 Uh, when we like, I guess officially started dating was senior year. That yeah. was 2012. Yeah. Yeah. It's a uh, long time, man. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, the world didn't end in 2012, so hey, yeah. Man, and I good. mean, it technically hasn't ended yet yeah. in 2020. So <laughs> yes, <laughs> oof, man, man. So what made you kind of like want to take that step? Because it's a big step. Uh, it just um, is just that time, I guess. Right. Yeah, it just right. ready for it. How did you start like planning for it? Well, I mean, she wanted to go somewhere for her birthday, and like. She picked McCall and like we had this big, the Shore Lodge, shout out. No, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, really, really, <laughs> really fancy hotel. I was uh, way fancier than I thought it was going to be. And just go up there for the weekend and hang out. Like we've been through McCall, but never stayed. And so mm-hmm. I was like, well, it's just going to be us two, which is kind of going to be a first because we're usually with, you know, friends or her family or something. So it's like it'll be more intimate, I guess, maybe if it's just us two. Yeah. So. Really, I didn't have a plan because I didn't have, I've never been up there to like explore or anything, but um, I wanted to do it on a dock and I was like, it'll be it, like snowy up there. It'll be cool, you know? And so I got on Google maps and found a couple of docks that were look like uh, parks, like public access. And on Google images, there's like people in the snow on the dock. I'm like, oh, this will be easy. This is too easy. Like no problem. Well, turns out all these docks are closed. Uh, oh. This is after we found out, but. Uh, our friends Jason and Daniel. Um, it was all up to did Daniel. They go scouting for they dogs? did. Yes. So that's awesome. Uh, this was Daniel's idea, but he, he's like, dude, why don't you get Jason to come up there? We'll drive up there and we'll we'll get pictures of it and like scope it out for you and stuff like that. And I was like, yeah, dude, do it. But like, I didn't even Jason didn't cross my mind because he's such a busy guy all the time. Yeah. I was like, there's no he way. Be like in Europe or yeah. in Asia. Or I was wherever. like, it's a Tuesday. He's gonna be God knows where. Like <laughs> yeah. he could be anywhere, you Filming know. Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, Daniel got us on a three way call, and nice. Jason was all for it, like super excited. And I was like, oh, this is cool. So yeah, they uh, like, oh my god, it's happening. It's a- yeah, <laughs> they drove up there about four, four and a half hours. Got there um, an hour before I proposed. Looked at the two places I'd sent them and said, these are no-goes. They're shut down. So they found this little marina. Um, and so it was pretty funny. They were, we had a group chat going on. And I was trying to keep it really inconspicuous. That's like, what I was going to ask. I was like, did Tia notice that yeah. you were like constantly on your phone? I was on my phone for quite a bit that day. And it was supposed to be our day, you know. And I'm like, I'm giving her crap about being on her phone. But I'm like, on my phone, like in the <laughs> corner. Right, like, like, shit. So... Jason sends me this picture. He's like, okay, I found this dock. It's called Mile High Marina. Um, and he like took a picture, a screenshot from Google Maps and then drew on the map of like which dock to take because there's a couple of them. And he sent me a picture of a stick that he laid in the snow. And he's like, okay. when, when you get to this stick, just go down to dock. And he's like, we'll leave another marker at the end where to stop. I'm like, okay. okay. So T and I are walking and it was kind of funny because it's really cold outside and we didn't have enough clothes on. Like we had jackets and stuff, but yeah. it was cold. So we take off walking and she's like, where are we going? And I was like, it's a secret. It's a one surprise I have for you. And she's like, freezing. So she's like, <laughs> she's like really? Yeah. She's like, are we going inside somewhere? And I was like, yes. Like, 
eventually <laughs> like i had a destination because mm-hmm. i really didn't know where i was walking either get down there we get to the marina and i can see daniel and jason's footprints on the docks but the ramp that went out to the dock was locked i was like oh gosh i don't know how they got down there i guess i'll figure it out so uh, the building the water was low so the building is off the water and there's like a big deck um, okay. we were walking across that and found another ramp, got on the shore, had to walk through mud and like snow, hopped up on the dock, and then I found the stick and took off. <laughs> but I got down there and there was no marker or anything. I was like, okay, these guys said there was a marker, but I don't see one. There was no footprints. So I just kept walking until I thought it was good. And then the whole time, I'm like, I did not see these guys anywhere. Like, I don't know where they're hiding. I don't know where they're at. I don't recognize any vehicles. Like, are they here? Like, I told them I was coming. So we get out there, and I do one last look to my left towards the shore. (laughs) Yeah. And I don't see anyone. I'm like, well, we're here. Like, this is happening. So, uh, you know, I did my little speech and, uh, you know, got on my knee and asked her to marry me. And she said yes. And, uh, you know, we like hugged and kissed and all that stuff, good stuff. (laughs) And, um, I look to my left and I see two little heads. They're both, (laughs) they're both, uh, poked up on the side of the dock and one has a camera another one has his phone out. It's Daniel and Jason, of course. And so it's, and it's funny because in the pictures Jason took, you can see like the moment T like realizes there's someone there taking pictures and, uh, yeah, it was super cool. Turns out they were um, hiding underneath the deck that we walked across. They were right below us. And so, like, when we walked above them, we were kicking snow on them. And Daniel swears that I looked underneath the deck when we got on the ground and saw him. Maybe I did. He was probably like, you're a gentleman. Your was probably like, I don't see anybody. Yeah, maybe maybe I did, and I just don't remember. But, yeah, it it, it turned out way better than I expected and Mm -hmm. super grateful to have two friends that were willing to drive basically eight hours in one day to scout and take pictures and – I felt bad because we got in the car when we were done, you know, they took us back to the hotel <laughs> and like in my head, I was like, man, I don't want these guys to just like leave. Like they drove all the way up <laughs> here. Like, well, thank you guys. <laughs> you want to head back now? Or? And that's exactly how it happened. And then it was, it was funny cause, uh, didn't even have to say anything. They're like, we have dinner plans. We have to leave. I'm like, Oh, okay. Like, <laughs> Oh, okay. You're, like you have other plans. You were like, the one that funded. You were yeah. like, "What? <laughs> this is my day." No. So yeah, that was uh, the rundown of how it happened. So that sounds insane. Just because, first of all, I can I can just and I don't know, but like I can just imagine Tia being like so c- confused, like and you like kind of casually looking for like the markers as yeah. you know, like we're walking so I thought that was great and then just imagining Jason and Daniel mm-hmm. just like it was really funny just... she knew what was happening oh yeah about the time we probably got on like the deck of where the building was at and that was the other thing too oh, she's like do you get permission to be out here and I'm like yes <laughs> which I didn't <laughs> And then in my head, I was like, as long as I get arrested after, like, it's yeah, cool. After, <laughs> Just don't show up while I'm doing this, okay? Like, yeah. But yeah, it was all, it was all good. And well, when you sent me the pictures, I was like, it looks like you guys were, like, by yourselves there. Yeah. And I was like, I wonder if, like, that was, like, it, because it looked beautiful. Like, the they are epic pictures. The ones yeah. you sent me, I, like, when I opened the, your message, I was like, I was just like, what the? <laughs> yeah, Jason did a really good job of making the uh, setting look much better than it did in real life. Like, it was still pretty, but it was, you know, it's <laughs> cold and snowy and just kind of gross outside, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, the pictures turned out really, really no, good. Oh, they're epic. Man. Yeah. How so. do you feel now? Was it just like a breath of like, we're like, oh. It's done. I can like relax a little bit or how'd you feel? Yeah. Like I knew she was going to say yes, but like, it's still a nervous feeling. Right. And it was kind of funny. I texted uh, Daniel and Jason and I was like, make sure you have the camera ready. Cause I might throw up, get that on camera too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's, oh, it's nice. Man. That's not on my shoulders anymore. Uh, but now it's the whole the planning wedding, wedding yeah. uh, planning the wedding talk and 
do you like these colors? Do you like these flowers? Do you like these decorations? I'm like, that's what I was, I was like. Are you going to be, <laughs> how involved are you in the, like in the little details? Is it more, are, were you like, you take care of this? Too, oh, she can take a care you? of yeah. as much as she wants. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're like, I'll just show up. <laughs> just tell me when and where to show up. And, uh, that's good. I'm, I remember Tina in second grade. She was one of the first people that I met when uh, we got to the U.S. here. And um, so now it's just kind of wild. Yeah. The, it's, kind of the I fact mean, that you guys are <laughs> getting married. Yeah, too. we all grew up together. It's uh, When Tia and I talk about like elementary school, we don't remember each other, though. Like, oh, at really? All. But that's kind of how it was I in mean, elementary, yeah, right? I was say, because we each had like our home room. Yeah. And then that was kind of basically mm-hmm. it. Yeah. I think the reason why I know her is because we just happened to be in the same room. Yeah. At home room. And then, uh, so my last name is Ayala and hers is Bailey. Mm-hmm. So I remember I was always like ahead of her or like if whenever yeah. we had to like, l- like line up, I would always look for her just because I knew that that was kind of my, I was like, okay, Tia, I was like, yeah, okay, you're right here. That was all right here. Okay, perfect, perfect. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of what I remember. Yeah. And I was just thinking about it. I'm like, oh, look at you guys. Yeah. Here we are. All, all adult ish, I guess. No. Yeah, I mean, one of the reasons why I wanted uh, to have you on here is because I feel like you've always been kind of that, I mean, as far as I've known you, you've, you've always been that presence of like, I, I don't even know how to say it, but like groundedness mm-hmm. in a way. I and Like, I feel like even before you kind of proposed, you already had your house built mm-hmm. um, and stuff like that. Like when, when we uh, met up earlier, you were talking about... Uh, like refinancing and like stuff like that like really adult stuff that i was like uh uh-huh, uh-huh. like i don't know i don't know anything about that but i you know when i find out like i'll come to you like if i ever need to mm-hmm. do that so no that's kind of why i i wanted to i can just have you on here because yeah i feel like for basically most of our friendship i feel like that's kind of how how i've gotten to know you just being like very like dependable very hard you always do kind of like you're you're very hard working uh-huh. so yeah i was like okay gates needs to be gates needs to be on the on I, the podcast i don't know it's uh funny to me i guess like growing up you know teachers and coaches saying that oh gage you're a leader everyone like looks up to you and like being younger and hearing that not i guess understanding what that means because you know when i was younger it's like, well, what do you guys mean? Like, I'm like the shyest kid ever. Like, what are we talking about? And I, I still am a shy adult too, but uh, I don't know. I guess that's just how I was raised to just work hard and, uh, you know, put your all into whatever you're doing. And I, I um, mean, and I feel like you, I mean, I feel like you do that, honestly. Yeah. Um. So I, I one of the stories that I think uh, I remember of you the most well, I mean, there's a couple. What one is um, I wasn't part of it, but you kind of told it to our friend group, and it, it kind of stuck in my head. Um, uh, it was like I think you guys, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, you guys were like at a football game or at yeah. a practice and stuff like that, and you, everyone was like complaining that it was cold, and uh, and you told them to kind of, like they asked you if you were because you weren't saying anything, mm-hmm. so they asked you if you weren't cold or anything, and you just told it. it Wait, you say it. You yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to butcher. So we're, we're standing on the sidelines uh, of a football game. We're on the team. We're just not playing at this moment. And um, it was cold, cold outside. And everyone was just complaining and complaining about how cold it was. And then Jason was standing next to me, like slaps me in the arm. He's like, Gage, aren't you cold? And I turned around and looked at him like dead serious. I was like, yeah, I'm cold, but I'm not about it like <laughs> yeah I, mean, I i feel like when you said that i was like okay that fits you that i mean that's you that's your personality uh, you're just like yeah just don't bitch about it you know. you'll be good the other one that um i have is um uh, you were um you were the actually the and i know we talked about this but you were the first person to talk uh to take me to a party like in high school because mm-hmm. i <laughs> I don't know. 
I don't know if you're like proud of that or you feel guilty about that. Or I don't know. Uh, a little bit of both because seeing how you turned out now is a good choice. And I, I chalk it all up to me taking you to your first party. I was, like, I was like, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I was like, I don't no. know if that's a compliment. I was like. No, I, I don't think it was necessarily a bad thing. I think there's, you know, a couple – uh, not feeling guilty i guess no it was good i don't every, regret it every, like, I, every, I don't... every time that i bring it up like your face you're just like <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like not let my bad it's like... well because it's it's i don't know i don't really like think it's that cool like you know taking your buddy to no, his first party see, like <laughs> but, but for me like so okay like that first party i remember i was like even i was like should I be doing this? I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be in so much trouble. And then, and then, but like, I wanted to go, you know, I was uh, like, oh, this is going to be so much fun. I was like, I'm going to see people in school, uh, like outside of school. This is going to be great. And then I remember I showed up, like we showed up and um, I was shocked. <laughs> I was shocked at the beginning just because, I don't know, I was like, wow, like there's beer everywhere <laughs> and that there was just people like hanging out. And I think I like, had one beer yeah but then i kind of felt guilty myself because then i was like i have to get back home and my parents are gonna find out that i that i drank a beer but i think you and i were in the same spot because i was like should i be doing this should i should i have miguel here like because i only had like one beer too because i well i knew you know we were going to be driving and that stuff so yeah yeah no i'm definitely glad you did i think um (laughs) i think it's it's been one of my fondest stories because i'm like Man, it took me into senior year to get to like a party, but then in in college, obviously that kind of changed. I kind of went like the opposite <laughs> of her, we were like a little bit there for, um. But no, it was good. Um, and it's funny because like I was thinking about this earlier. When you moved up to Boise, I feel like we cut just kind of like carried on from there because like when you first got here. It like we like hit up downtown like mm-hmm. pretty pretty often. It, it was pretty, it was just like a different different. Don't say pretty often. I think yeah, I we mean, were downtown like every weekend for like three months straight I mean, there for a little bit. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, what do you think? So job wise, you 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 were telling me that you got like this promotion at work. Yeah. What did like thinking back like because I know you um after high school you went to csi Mm -hmm. um like did you have a plan essentially like after high school and like or has your like has it just been like a kind of like a roller coaster type of thing for you or uh it's uh so after high school i went to csi and i started off in csi's engineering uh associates in engineering And that first semester just rocked my world because high school was, you know, fairly easy. Then I didn't have to do homework. I was, I could do my homework in class, that kind of thing. So Mm -hmm. wasn't really prepared on the amount of work it would take and the amount of studying. And plus, you know, being freshly moved out of my parents' house at 18, you know, just don't want to do school. You want to do other things. Right. So, yeah, I had a plan of, you know, I wanted to be an engineer one day, um, but like I said, that first semester just really it spooked me. And so I ended up getting a different degree uh, in liberal arts. And then when I was done with that, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go up to Boise and like really get things uh, on track. Well, I landed the job that I'm currently in, which is in the tech industry field engineering. And I haven't been back to school since I moved to Boise, which is like five years yeah. ago. But I'm in a tech and engineering field, so I'm kind of like on track You're without a there, yeah. yeah without the degree. Well, so I, I oh, I'm just very fortunate to be like where I'm at without the education that everyone else has. It's just one of those things that just you know the stars aligned multiple times, and mm-hmm. you know here here we are. I I feel like that's kind of what I kind of what, like what we were saying earlier. Um, just like my like the perception. Uh, like you you're just if anything that just shows like when you were telling me earlier about your promotion like that just shows that, like that like the work that you put into like your job like it does pay off mm-hmm. you know and I, I just think that that's the coolest thing because you you hear a lot about like oh you know just work hard and like things will work out and you know sometimes they do and sometimes they don't but I think that's what makes you so cool is that you kind of prove 
that right in a in a way like in a very tangible way you're like yes like i it's been through my hard work that i'm here where i am today so yeah yeah i, I definitely would not be where i am today without you know the work ethic i have which you know has i was raised with you know that's just what i was taught and uh i i do think it's cool to be working with a bunch of other people that have you know degrees in you know supply chain management or you know some sort of engineering when i don't i think i think i do think it's a pretty good example of like you know if you just work hard and you know it'll all come in time yeah and i think that's what happened with me mm -hmm. um the other thing to that too is i think it's kind of cool to be an uh, example of like not necessarily having an education in order to do like really cool stuff Likely you like yeah. yeah so i mean that mean that doesn't mean i shouldn't go back to school uh because i kind of have been in school the last little bit right um, yeah you've kept up yeah i think you should you know, people should always be continuously learning, no matter what it is, reading books or going to school or just whatever. For me, I just not very good at school, don't like it, but I like learning. So, you know, if I can learn something that's going to help me do my job better, then, you know, I'm going to do that. And that's what I've been doing. So, yeah. Oh my gosh. What do you, what do you have planned? Do you, uh, do you have like, now that everything is kind of like, uh, there's so many things happening, oh, obviously, now with your wedding coming up or, like, stuff like that. Um, what, do you have anything, in, like, any plans for the future that you're kind of going for? Or are you just kind of, like, taking it one day at a time and see? And see? Like, uh, what do you mean? Like, career-wise? Like, yeah, life career-wise, life-wise. Or... Life -wise. Uh, <laughs> and... I don't know, man, because stuff can change so quick. Like, we're from a, you know, small town and you know, getting married and like thinking about family and stuff like that, you know, kind of want to move back to where we are from and have our family around, yeah. you know, but on the you know flip side of that, you know, Boise is an awesome place and there's always something to do here. There's, you know, like I like to fish, there's way more, but there's better fishing yeah. up here than down there, you know, that kind of thing. And, uh, and then career wise, there's just, I can, you know, eventually be anything I want to be. So yeah. I, I don't know yeah, as cheesy as that is, sounds, you know, but the world is literally your oyster, I think. Yeah, so we'll see kind of playing it by ear, I guess. Yeah. I, I know we'll be in, you know, the Boise area for at least the next couple of years. So we have, you know, some time to figure out think what direction we're gonna go. Did you find that like well, I'll speak for myself, like when, when we were growing up, I there was a time that I couldn't wait to get out of Buell. Mm-hmm. But now that I, I maybe shouldn't have said that. I mean, yeah. Um, but now I feel like every time I go back, um, it's kind of nice. It's we're exactly the same. When I was living in Twin, going to CSI, and you know, well, like when I lived with my parents in Buell, I was like, I cannot wait to move out of here and like you know go some someplace different, which ended up being twenty minutes down the road in Twin. <laughs> yeah, you're like freedom. Yeah. <laughs> But then, you know, two years or whatever in Twin, I was like, man, I'm sick of this place. I just want to go do go somewhere and do something fun. Mm -hmm. And then came up to Boise and it was exactly what I wanted. But now, just like you said, every time I go home, I'm like, it really wasn't that bad here. Yeah, it's, no. you know. Yeah. How was hunting this year? I, I remember you, you kind of explained to me how hunting works because obviously that's something that I don't have. Oh, man. The, the very least idea. But th the very basics of hunting is you find the animals, you get close to the animals. And then, you know, you you get the animal. <laughs> you get, how, but, but you told me that there's kind of like a, and I don't even know how to, like a method behind yeah. it. Like, so there in Idaho, it's controlled hunts. And what that means is Idaho is divvied up into, I don't know, 50 or 60 some odd units. And being a controlled hunt, there's only so many tags for whatever animal that you're looking for, like deer or elk right, or something. Right, that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like a lottery system. Like if you want to go hunting for elk in this unit, you have to put in with, you know, anywhere from like hundreds to thousands of people. Right. And there's only so many tags. And then, you know, they draw names and you win or you lose. That's what, yeah, that's what I thought was mm -hmm. kind of surprising because... Again, coming from someone who knows nothing about hunting, yeah. I just thought like you literally just went out and like 
You shot whatever you could get and no. you called it good. There are over the counter tags or like regular tags where it's just a general hunt. Like I can go and just get a regular deer tag. Right. And then there's a few units that you can go in there and, you know, get a get a buck deer, one that has antlers mm-hmm. or whatever, but did you put in for an elk this year? I did. I got a cow elk tag um, in the Wyhees. And so that was that was cool because I haven't done much in the Wyhees, um, like at all, even though I've lived in Cuna for over a year now. But yeah, my, my grandpa came up. He stayed with us. And for like two weeks straight, we we're out there every day just driving around. We saw did tons of deer. Uh, no, we saw elk, though. And uh, the first day we saw him, I started shaking like, like with with like just being so nervous and excited, you know? Oh, oh okay. Yeah, yeah, no, like we, I saw, because we're sitting there watching this mountainside through the binoculars and out of nowhere, these little white specks are coming across. I'm like, holy cow, grandpa, grandpa. And like, I run over to him, grab him, like there's elk over there. And then that's when I like start shaking. Like, <laughs> yeah. I like grab my grandpa's shoulder. I'm like, you're going to have to hold me up here in a second. But um, they were pretty far away. We tried to get closer to them. Um, they somehow disappeared on me that day. And so we went out the next yeah. day, found the same herd, got closer to them, but again, we just couldn't get on them. And then the third day, same thing. We saw elk in the same area. Um, but where we were at was just being my grandpa and I and not having, we did have a four wheeler, but there was not hardly any road access where we were. And I uh, saw a couple elk and I probably could have maybe got a shot off. But the thought of trying to get it out of there was oh. uh, way more overbearing than actually like shooting the elk. Like, that's another thing, though, right? Like you're at a distance when you shoot them, yeah. so then you have to like make your way over there uh-huh. and like basically like drag it out, right? Yeah, or... you can. You know, if you're close enough, it's easy easy enough to drag them out. But like with an elk, you can quarter them too, like where you, yeah, yeah, you cut off their, yeah. you know, their legs and the meat that you want. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's laws to that too. Like you have to take the full back straps and all four quarters. Um, I think that might be it, but like you can take neck meat and a whole bunch of stuff and like throw it in a backpack and haul it back to the pickup. But I wasn't really too keen on that idea. So, (laughs) but yeah, uh, hunting's awesome, man. I grew up with it. Um, everyone, well, most of everyone in my family hunts to this day and, it's a fun little tradition to do every year. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I can't imagine being over there just because, like, you, you remember when we went hunting and like, right, not hunting, uh, not ha- not hunting, <laughs> um, camping, uh-huh. and we literally got there for like two seconds and like I fell and had a splinter. <laughs> <laughs> Weekend was over at that point. I had a splinter on my finger the whole time <laughs> I was there. I was like, dang it. So I can't even imagine how hunting would be for me. It would probably not be, not be very pleasant. Um, other than I would scare all the animals. Like I me, mean, like I can't be quiet. Like, like footstep wise. Uh, so I would be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, it's it's pretty insane because even out there, it doesn't matter how quiet you're trying to be. Like. Like, like me when I'm out there walking by myself through the bushes, the thing is it's, it's so quiet out there anyways that even like a bush rubbing against your pant leg oh, or something like, right. is it, too, it sounds like it echoes. Like <laughs> it's just, it's hard to be quiet. And so. the animals are probably just like, yeah, extra, yeah. yeah it's definitely an experience. You should try and yeah, get a hunting license and no, we'll go out there someday. That's, uh, I think that that's probably not going to Oh yeah, I can't even think about how that would be. I feel like you know that's that's too much. That's too much. too much. How so? I don't know, man. Uh, so I don't know. What what well, what I is it like of I it that you don't like constantly. or uh, you what? <laughs> just like fall constantly. Oh, like, I see. I like see. just like trip. Well, you everywhere. can like we could road hunt. You know, just drive around. Look. Oh, you. Oh, right. You were telling me about that yeah. the other time, man. Well, that's how we found these elk. Basically, you just new area we were just taking every road we could to see where it goes and that's how we stumbled across those elk that day okay that doesn't sound too bad no it's just really not 
I, I, oh man, I kind of been wanting to learn how to shoot. I'm not gonna lie, like, uh huh, you know. Have you ever like, shot a gun no, before? No, no. Oh, dude, we no, should go yeah, out sometime. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. I feel like I'm gonna be one of those people, though. You know those like videos that like people shoot and then the the gun kind of like shoots. Yeah, back the and recoil. Then just, like, yeah, and like hits them in the face. Yeah, I yeah. feel like that would be get me. scoped yeah, where yeah, it comes yeah, back I, and I, the. I, the scope of the rifle hits your eyebrow, yeah. and you have a big ring, and then you're bleeding. Yeah, that, 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 <laughs> that would be me. I mean, uh, no, th- there's a lot of things. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things. I feel like, yeah, it's just been kind of like a shelter. Like, I don't want to say, like, sheltered, um, but just, like, different, different experiences that I'm like, hmm, you know, like, that'd be fun to try. Yeah, no, no, definitely. Like everyone has different hobbies and interests, and there's just so many of them to go around. That yeah, like... I mean, you can't do everything. Yeah, man. I mean, even uh, and I was telling, I was uh, talking to this, uh, talking about this with um, uh, Jason and and Camden, just like how even like going camping for me was uh, insane. <laughs> I was like, I'm not enough. Like, I, I, I'm embarrassed. I can't remember what year what year it was not this last one but the one before uh-huh, that like four years well, ago or yeah something. <laughs> where i was like an like an old man <laughs> the whole time we were there <laughs> because it was just so cold and i i didn't plan for it so like the whole time i was just like freezing and, like i couldn't even move because like my joints and i was just like oh well like oh this sucks <laughs> well that year we went we were like at seven Seven or eight thousand feet, I can't remember, but yeah. it was much colder up there than it was down in the right. reservoir. Like, so we were up there, like at some alpine lakes, and uh, I always keep a spare coat in my pickup underneath the seat. Well, everyone else, <laughs> like, <laughs> like Daniel, he was, um, he didn't get out of his pajamas all weekend because they were warmer <laughs> than all the shorts yeah. he brought. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was bad, and then one one night it rained, right? Yeah, and like the windstorm. The, the last night, I think. So we got up. I was like, Shh. I could barely like get out of the tent because I was like frozen. <laughs> I was just like, man. Uh, but yeah, no, good the, times. The, it's a lot better when you're prepared, though. You know, like. <laughs> The funny thing, though, is, like, I remember that, I feel like that whole year was just, like, a wash for me. Because, like, I remember I took, like, this coat that had, like, it was just not a very, like, camping coat. It was, like, one that you would kind of wear out for dinner or something, uh-huh. but not one for, for like, the outdoors. <laughs> and, I, like, there's a picture, because um, you were teaching me how to gut a fish. Yeah. Uh, and, uh... Yeah, man. Every time I look at that picture, I'm like, oh, where was I? Where did I think that I was going? <laughs> Some fancy restaurant like, at the top I of the did, mountain. I was, I was that person to just like stand on like a sore thumb. Like, I was just like, man. <laughs> but I did cut my fish. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did that. Uh, that was a fun time because we were catching those fish and then we were just... <laughs> gutting them and jason had a frying pan on the fire we yeah. just toss in and that's that what we fun. ate actually that was fun. Yeah. all we had were sausages and hot dogs and a few bags of chips and fish yeah. for like two and a half days yeah yeah well real many it was nice it was it was good and then the funny thing was that my splinter when i caught my fish it like slipped out oh my head like it was the fish because we tried to like <laughs> take it out like uh-huh. i tried i think like either you or jason tried to like take it out of my finger and it wouldn't budge and then like when i caught my fish <laughs> it kind of just slipped out i was just like oh god a bunch of grown man on the side of this mountain holding miguel's hand trying to pull yeah, a spider out just... <laughs> like we're performing uh, surgery i i mean i mean when you say it like that and, and we were using one of those like um Pliers. Yeah, like a Leatherman, yeah, we like a multi tool. Yeah, we were yeah. using pliers. And then this this time around, I was telling Jason about the um, how you guys like human chained to get me down the hill, like the oh, yeah. steep hill. I was like, oh my gosh! I was like, I swear. As the only times you ever been fishing with is with us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so it's been fun, but oh, man. 
I mean, if we could ever do like, so I know, like, sit, switch it up, um, something more indoors. You know, you're like, oh, John, just kidding. Bowling for no, yeah, legit, just go bowling for a weekend. I feel like that'd be nice. What makes a true friendship? Uh, true friendship. Oh man, is there a definition to that? Like, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. For me, a true <laughs> Can friendship. You use it in a sentence? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, true friendship. I don't know. The first thing that came to my mind when you asked that was just someone that you can hang out with or, you know, not even hang out with, you know, t- just talk with, you know, have fun with, you know, be be yourself, um, you know, express your opinions and, you know, concerns or, you know, share good feelings without feeling judged, I guess, mm-hmm. you know, just... Um, you know, good times, right. you know, I don't know. Like, or, that's... or worry that you're going to like, that you're going to say something and you're like, Oh, was I supposed to? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. I think it just ultimately comes down to like the people that, um, you just enjoy life with, I guess, you know, who is one person that has impacted your life in a positive way and how, uh, I don't know. There's, quite a few people that just ran through my mind right there i guess like tia my fiance i mean yeah we were kids when we started dating but like we've lived through our adult lives you, you know so far together i i mean so far as like <laughs> so far. as in like 20 i'm 26 yeah. you know and it's gonna keep going that's what i mean by so far yeah, yeah. um you know and so making decisions with her and you know i have daniel um you know, best friends since middle school. Uh, and then, you know, people like you and Jason and, you know, just that's, that's a like loaded question, man, because I know people I know. can have effects on your life, even like the smallest ways At like, different, yeah. and different yeah. times in your life. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. um, what is one piece of advice you would give to the youngest member of your family? The youngest member in my family, um, See, you have a couple little cousins. Oh man, that see, that's a question that I need a little bit to think about because I'm not a very big advice giver. But uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I guess like kind of back to what we were saying before is just if you find something that you like, don't care about what other people think. Um, you know, stick to the things that make you happy and uh, that you enjoy, you know, doing in your life, that kind of thing. So, yeah. I think that's pretty much it, Gage. Cool. Well, thanks uh, for having thank me, man. Thank you for being here. It was uh, a good time. It was fun. You've been listening to the More Than Disc podcast. Before you go, don't forget to give us a quick rating and review. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram and visit downwiththis.com to stay up to date with the latest information about the show. Have a great rest of your day, rest of your week, and we'll catch you on the next one.